Hello, welcome to BMC. I am Dr. M. I'm not meaning this to be at all clickbaity when I say that vet med is in trouble and has been for a while. Join me, you'll learn something. Because um, of this pandemic, more people now have pets in their household than they did before, um, which means that there are more pets for vet clinics to try and care for. Um, and compounding that issue is the fact that we have to do even more cleaning and this just makes the entire process of seeing appointments less efficient. Um, this is causing an immense amount of stress and strain on those who work in vet clinics and this stress and strain has been going on for months and months and months um, with no sign of it leaving in the future. Um, this is why you may have noticed it's taking longer to get an appointment with your vet clinic for something your, your pet needs. This is why some emergency clinics have had to stop accepting patients at times and why you might have to drive further than you previously would have had to for emergency care for your pet. In general, people that work in vet clinics have huge hearts and are there to help. And so we are now experiencing a lot of feelings of guilt because we are unable to help them all and save them all. Um, and people are not helping with that because many of them are emotionally abusive, uh, emotionally manipulative, verbally abusive, even some are physically abusive. And one of the biggest ironies of, of it all is that all these people who have literally dedicated their lives to helping your animals, those are the people that clients are yelling at and threatening and hurting and trying to emotionally manipulate. The things that are said to us are so cruel. To be fair, this global pandemic is not the root of the problem in vet med. Um, it's kind of just the straw that's breaking the camel's back currently. The abuse from clients is not new. It, it is worse these days, but it's definitely not new. Many vet clinics also have bad management. A lot of the managers will not support people who work for them properly. They will expect long work hours, no lunch breaks, no breaks at all. Working in vet med also means incredibly long hours. If you're scheduled for 10 hours, expect to be there at least 12 and to take some of that work home with you. It is incredibly hard to separate yourself from your work. It's almost impossible to do that. You're almost always expected to be reachable. You're being bothered about something or another. You never get time away, fully away, to take a break and recharge. Along with those incredibly long work hours, there's also often a lot of time spent on call, which is draining in a totally different way. It interrupts sleep um, and over the years, this is also often very exhausting for veterinarians. As a population, we also tend to be very high achieving, caring perfectionists, and that takes a toll as well when, when medicine has its limitations and you're doing the very best you can, and yet it's not good enough. That toll um, is, a, is a difficult one to bear. And with all of this, we haven't even come to the mental, emotional toll from all of the cases that we see bearing witness to so very much pain and suffering every day. People think that the job is puppies and kittens and foals and cute young animals, and occasionally it is, but the vast majority of it are sick animals or animals that aren't being cared for by their people well enough, animals that are in pain, animals that are suffering. 
and that takes a toll day after day after day. Adding to all of the stressors I've previously mentioned is the fact that our patient lives are much shorter than the lives of uh, the patients of our colleagues in human medicine. As veterinarians, we deal with a lot more death than our human medicine colleagues do. And on top of having more death, we also have so many euthanasias in our lives, and that does add a stress as well. The actual euthanasia is less stressful than witnessing suffering that we're unable to fix. At least with euthanasia, we are able to prevent suffering and put an end to suffering in a peaceful way. Um, but still, all of that exposure to death is a stressor and it takes a toll on veterinarians and everybody who works in a vet clinic. As if all of that toll wasn't enough, there is an immense stressor that veterinarians have because of their debt to income ratio. We have the same amount of debt as our human medicine physician colleagues do. We go to post-secondary for similar amounts of time or the same amount of time and yet the average veterinarian depending on exactly where you are and what statistics you look at but earns roughly ninety thousand dollars in a year when you compare this to human physicians who are earning three hundred thousand five hundred thousand or more every year with the same amount of debt it is very easy to understand why veterinarians feel an immense amount of financial stress. This makes it very hard to find any reason to stay in the field of vet med. Um, and the only reason that we are there is because of a passion, a calling, the desire to help all the animals that don't have a voice. And so then to have clients accusing me of being money hungry is incredibly painful and insulting because it is so far from the reality. In 2020, the average amount of student debt for veterinarians was $200,000. And I know many who were much higher than that, 400,000 or even $500,000 in debt. This is why the industry as it is, is unsustainable. When you have $200,000 worth of debt, you are paying more than half of your monthly income towards the student debt you don't you physically don't have enough to live on and it means that the amount you are left with is that you are working for less than minimum wage it, it, it's not sustainable it's simply not i hope that hearing about and thinking about all these stressors that veterinarians face has you now thinking what are the consequences of those stressors and frankly there are many a lot of Veterinarians experience burnout, whether it's emotionally or physically. A lot of veterinarians get injured. A lot of veterinarians leave vet med as soon as they are able to. Lastly, there was a study from the CVMA that came out showing that over 26% of the veterinarians that they surveyed had seriously considered suicide within the last 12 months. That is way higher than the percentage in the general population of 12.2% who had considered suicide over their entire lifetime. We also know that veterinarians are incredibly likely to die from suicide. Compared to the general population, it's somewhere between two and three and a half times more likely to die from suicide when you are a veterinarian. It is one of, if not the highest risk of death from suicide out of all of the professions. This is a major problem and I don't know of a single veterinarian who isn't directly daily affected by this. We also lose veterinary technicians to suicide, those are our, our nurses. Um, 
We also lose practice managers. We also lose front desk staff. We also, everybody who works in a vet clinic is at risk of this because of the immense stressors that we operate under. Since I've graduated, I have lost four colleagues that I personally knew to suicide. One that many people know of is Dr. Sophia Yin. I met her when I was a vet school student and when I graduated she was gracious enough to be a mentor of mine as I have a huge behavior interest and was practicing in an incredibly rural area that did not have a veterinary behaviorist for me to refer patients to. And she died from suicide in September 2014. The grief is something that we carry with us. My profession is hurting and it's in trouble. We need things to change to reduce some of the stressors that are so immense for the people in the vet med world. So what can you, as a person who is a guardian for a pet, what can you do to support your veterinarian? If you are not being emotionally manipulative, if you are not being verbally abusive, we already appreciate you a lot. If you can keep up with preventive care for your pets, that will help to prevent illness in the future, which will make our load easier, and it will make your pet's quality of life better. That's our goal. We want that for your pets. So keep up with their vaccines, keep up with their flea and heartworm prevention, keep up with anything else your veterinarian is recommending for their, their general preventive care. Please stop taking advice from all the people who have zero qualifications. So much of the advice that I see online is wrong and downright dangerous. And when your pet is exposed to that, it makes their health worse and it makes my job harder. And if you say, I don't trust my current veterinarian, then you need to find a different one. Not every vet is the right fit for every person and that's perfectly okay. But find one you trust, develop a relationship with them, be responsible, be prepared financially, physically to care for your pet. For a lot of us, that means pet insurance. That's what it means for me. I don't have the money to pay for an emergency that would happen. So I have pet insurance for my pets. That way, finances will not be part of your consideration and discussion with your veterinarian. Be kind to the people who are working at your clinic. Please be kind to them. They're doing their best. If you want to go way above and beyond, most veterinarians that I know treasure thank you notes above all else. If you wish to leave a card or a letter just expressing a thank you for something your veterinarian has done for your pets, I know that would be so very much appreciated. And so there are some culture changes that must happen in the world of vet med. But those will take time and I recognize that most of the people who are watching this are not veterinary professionals or people who are in a position to make those changes. To my colleagues and all of the staff, all of the vet clinics, if you are hurting, please reach out. Not one more vet is doing their best to try to support veterinarians that are in distress. I will link their website. 
I will also link the numbers that you can call if you are having suicidal thoughts and ideation. I don't want to lose any more of my friends. I hope that you are caring for yourself and doing what you need to keep yourself from burning out. You have to care for yourself first, otherwise you can't help anybody. So please set up healthy boundaries and maintain them. All right, I'll see you on the next video when we return to talking about general information for those who are pet guardians. Bye for today.